رحم الله من قرأ الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي لا يبلغ مدر حطه القائلون ولا يحسي نعماءه العادون ولا يؤدي حقه المجتهدون الذي لا يدركه بعد الحمم ولا يناله غوص الفطن ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين العبد المعيد الرسول المسدد المصطفى العمجل المحمود الأحمد سيدنا ومولانا أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين لا سيما بقية الله في العرضين صاحب العصر والزمان خليفة الرحمن إمام الإنس والجان ولعن الله وعداءهم أجمعين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله بقوله الحق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وعلم أنما أموالكم وأولادكم فتنة وأن الله عنده عجر عظيم صلى الله عليه وسلم الله عليه وسلم the elements of a successful Islamic family has been our topic. Tonight is lecture number six. The past two lectures we've been looking at the rights of our parents over us. And more specifically, the discussion we had two nights ago about mothers and yesterday about fathers and by extension about the idea of parents in general. We mentioned that the acceptance of our amal sometimes, closeness and qurbat towards Allah, and an easy akhirat is all dependent on our relationship with our parents. And as I promised you tonight, inshallah, we'll look at the, the flip relationship, the rights that a child has over the parents. Now, unfortunately, there's more children in the audience than there are parents. <laughs> I'm not sure if the memo got out, but hopefully when all of you become parents, you'll remember this discussion as well. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. Raising children in any environment is difficult. It's not easy. The Quran, the ayat that read in the khutbah from Surah Furqan talks about the fact that أَنَّمَا أَمْوَالَكُمْ وَأَوْلَادُكُمْ فِتْنَةٌ Your mal and your kids are a fitna. Fitna in the Quranic language does not mean fitna in our language. Don't worry. Fitna in the Quranic language means test. Imtahan, azmayish. How are they a test? <clears throat> Children, like I said, at every stage, in every era, in regards of where you're raising the children is always a difficult test for the parents. It's a test of finances, it's a test of patience, it's a test of your reliance on Allah, it's a test on several avenues. And more specifically, when you raise your children in an environment like this, the test is a little bit more difficult. So the first point that we want to make is that this concept and this idea of raising children has not only been a difficult situation for us today as Eastern parents trying to raise Western children. This also has affected the prophets as well. There are reasons why we have stories of Nabi Nuh's son, for example, or, reason, or, or, or stories in the Quran of even some of the sons of Nabi Yaqub. Nabi Yaqub had some great children like Nabi Yusuf and Benjamin. At the same time though, he had children, of course, who would lie to him, who would become jealous and envious. 
And so this also affected the prophets of Allah. That's why the Quran, when Nabi Nu is pleading with Allah to say, look, this adab is coming, Allah. Can you at least save my son? He's my son, I'm your prophet. He's my ahal. <coughs> the Quran says, Innahu laysa min ahalik. He's not from your ahal. He's not your son. If he was, he would follow your path, listen to your advice respect you as a prophet of Allah. And so this situation, this difficulty, this patience and this test that all of you parents are in right now, the parents before you and the prophets before you have all been through this very difficult test. Point number one. Point number two is the secret to the success of some of our grandest prophets. For example, three of the Ulul Adham Prophets, namely Prophet Musa, Prophet Isa, of course, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Their secret to their guidance was that they used techniques and tools that were prevalent in their society during their time to guide the people. The essence of successful guidance and hidayat it's not to use the same equation that's been used for decades and centuries before you. In fact, the success of any hidayat or any hadi, any guide, is to make sure that you understand what tools are used in this era, in this society, in this part of the world, and use those tools to guide the people. Us as parents, we are guides for our children. It's no different. If Nabi Musa used the Qur'an to guide the people, and Nabi Isa used the staff to guide the people, if our Holy Prophet used, let's say, medicine to guide the people, then they would fail as prophets. What made them successful prophets was, like I said, what was prevalent during their time they used. So if you bring that to today's day and age, the way that my respected parents of the audience were raised in India, Pakistan, you can't use those tools and techniques here in this part of the world. It simply won't cut it. You can try to force it, but eventually the result of that forcing is what? Is rebellion. They'll rebel against you. So you have to change around the script a little bit. And again, I'll, this is the third time that I'm saying this in three days. I'm not saying to adopt this style of parenting. I'm saying there has to be an equal balance between what Islam says and what is prevalent in this society as well. There's lots of good when it comes to parenting in this society that we simply are ignoring. And in fact, there are techniques in this society that are preached and that are motivated and promoted that actually come from the hadith of the Ahl al-Bayt. For example, Imam Ali alayhi salatu wa salam he describes the parents as a gardener. I really want all of my parents, and those even of you who are perhaps my generation, who are recently parents, like I am. He describes parents as gardeners. The role of a gardener is what? You have a garden with different flowers in the garden bed. You have a rose, you have a tulip, you have a carnation, you have other flowers that I don't know names of. <laughs> And the role of the gardener is to do what? Is to make sure that each flower receives the attention it needs to grow. I really want you to understand this. If that gardener supplied the exact same of water, exact same amount of water on all the flowers, exact same amount of sunlight on all the flowers, exact same of food on all the flowers, then he will lose some flowers, other flowers will grow. There are certain flowers that require drops of water to grow. There are certain flowers that require hours of sunlight to grow. There are certain flowers that grow better on the inside of the house as opposed to outside of the house. If you know a little bit about gardening, you'll know where to put your flowers so they can flourish. Parents in the house are no different. Every single one of your children in your house is a flower in the flower bed. And each flower requires its own specific treatments. Every single child in your house, you've got four kids, two kids, three kids, five kids, every child is different. There are some kids who you tell them one thing once, it's done. 
There are some kids who need to be told time and time again, three times, four times, reminders, describing them into detail. Go upstairs. In my room, there's a box. In the box, there is a case. Open the case of a red key. Bring that to me. All these details. I say the same child, two years younger, let's say, you'll say, get my key in my box. You'll know exactly what you're talking about. Certain kids need constant reminders that you love them. Your kids will ask you, Baba, do you love me? Mama, do you love me? Mama, are you mad at me? Baba, are you mad at me? Certain kids don't, don't, don't require that. Other kids need constant reassurance that what they're doing is right. They'll do something and they'll ask you, is this right, Baba? Is this right, Mama? Is this how you did it? Yes, that's how I want it. Other kids aren't like that. The role of the parent is to be the gardener inside the house. You'll be amazed, and really it is a tribute to the Khalik, where there are individuals coming from the exact same tarbiyat, the exact same nourishment, exact same um, uh, upbringing, but two different individuals. You can't treat all your kids the same. You can't bring them up all the same. Some kids are very sensitive, others are not. Some kids are very shy, others are not. You know, sometimes we have to recognize that the kids nowadays in this generation, if it's one flaw that we have, is that we're very sensitive children. Very sensitive children. I have so many times where fathers come and they call their son over to me and they say, look, this is my son, he's 14 years old. Tell him, Malana, to pray namaz at home, please. Tell him, please, to respect us. Tell him to not spend his whole day playing video games. Tell him this. Tell him, look, this is Molana. He's here until Sunday. Sit down, talk to him every single day. Sit down now and talk to him. And he's looking at me with a red face. Like, what do you want me to do? And the father thinks, you know what, I'm doing tarbiyat. No, it's not. You recognize that your son will not flourish in that environment. He's embarrassed right now. He's too shy to say anything. When he's ready, he'll come and approach us. But this whole episode is not going to cut it. Now what you've done is you can physically see the sun rolling his eyes. And saying, oh great, my backward dad thinks this is, this is what's going to work. So they grab him by the neck and they force him to come sit. That's not how it's going to work. Recognize the flowers inside your flower bed. And give each child what they need. Every single child is different. That's the beauty of the Khalik. The Khalik, the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look, very simple. Sallu ala Muhammad You know, you have a painter, you have a, an artist, let's say, who paints, for example. After a while, when there are certain amounts of paintings that he does, you can see a certain theme across his paintings. And those of you who are, have a keen eye towards art, for example, you can look at a painting and literally tell me who the painter is. This, for example, is a Van Gogh, let's say. Okay. How do you know that? There's no signature, no one told you. You can tell, this is how he paints. Right? People who compose music, they usually use the exact same instruments when they're composing music. Architects who build buildings. You could tell that this company built this building. It looks the exact same as their previous building. So every creator or maker or developer has some common theme within his creations. Allah is the only Khalik in this universe. Where you can never say that they are the exact same creations across the board. Even our fingerprints are different from each other. Forget ourselves. Forget our personalities. Twin bro uh, uh, boys, twin girls come out of the womb the exact same time, exact same age, five minutes apart, two different individuals. Zameen Asman difference. That's the beauty of the Khalik. And the job of the parent is to recognize that difference. You cannot parent all your children in your home the exact same way. Every child has a right to be loved the way that they deserve to be loved. Every child has a right to be a given tarbiyat and nurture and nature and love the way that they are supposed to be given that tarbiyat. If one child requires more attention, give them that attention. If another child doesn't require that attention, don't give them that attention. It's not easy to raise children. It's very difficult. It doesn't stop when there are small kids. It doesn't stop when they become parents. The constant worry of parents is as long as there are children, there is worry. Even when you become grandparents, 
And your, your kids are parents themselves. There's constant worry. That's just the nature of parents. But if we are able to use this hadith by Imam Ali carefully, we're able to understand, to identify the sensitivity of mm. our children. Again, I go back to all of you who were raised in Eastern countries. Mm. Your father could say sometimes the most cruelest thing to you. And you'd laugh it off. Or you'd brush it off. <clears throat> or you wouldn't show the fact that it affected you. The kids today aren't like that. We're very hassas children. We're very sensitive children. We cry very easily. We get upset very easily. We become depressed very easily. We become down very easily. Because the reality is that when these kids are very small, at the age of eight and nine, you as parents are like God to these children. You have to understand this for a moment, especially my sons that are fathers. If you are a father in the audience who has small kids, age five, age seven, age nine. Understand, and no joke, you as the father are the superhero of that child. He walks around in his school, he talks about you to other, uh, other kids. That my father is the strongest father, he has the biggest muscles, he is the tallest. He can beat up your dad any single day of the week. He's faster than your dad. Oh yeah, your dad does this, my dad does this two times. Nothing that you do can be wrong in his eyes. He wants to dress like Baba, talk like Baba, eat those things that Baba eats. He wants to stand up like Baba, pray beside Baba, go to Astana with Baba. If Baba's reading a mercy, he wants to sit on stage beside Baba. He does matam like Baba, gives the adhan like Baba. Everything in his world is you. And then comes God. And so you build up this thing to the point where whatever you do, good or bad, he's going to reciprocate that. And then there comes a time where his world collapses in front of him. Where he sees you lie for the first time. Where he sees you, for example, yell at his mother. Where he sees you, for example, do something that's not worthy of him being a superhero. His entire world crumbles in front of him. Be careful. Your children look at you to be that image, that maqam, that motivation where I should be at. Because remember, they will parent their children as they were parented themselves. Abusive fathers are abused people in the past. Destructive parenting comes from a destructive household when they were younger. You're shaping their future, their Play-Doh, and you are molding them as they wish. And yes, there comes a time when they're 19, 21, 25, in their 30s like me, and the Play-Doh has hardened, and you can't mold them anymore. You had your opportunity. You know, I used to, in, 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 in school, in grade 8, we had shop class. You guys remember, you guys remember shop class? I'm on. In Canada, we had shop class. We would build things with machines. We'd build clocks and lamps and this and that, right? So sometimes, you know, you, they, they, they would teach you how to use wood. So sometimes you would build a lamp. I used to build a lamp. I still have that lamp at home. My mom is really proud of that lamp. It's, a, it's an ugly lamp, but she's proud of it. Okay, my son made it with, her, with, with his own hands. And there came a time where the lamp was drying, and I could have fixed the mistakes in the lamp, but I didn't. I let it dry like that. And now, almost 20 years later, the lamp is ugly white, so I didn't fix it when I had the proper time. Kids are no different. Right now, for those of you who have young children inside the house, even if you are a grandparent to young children inside the house, because Dada is equal as Baba sometimes, be careful. Nana is equal as Baba sometimes, be careful. You have the opportunity to mold them as you wish. And it takes the slightest, smallest thing. Somebody calls, he picks up, Say, Baba, it's for you. Tell them I'm not here. I'm not here, I'm not here, I'm not here. I'm not here, you do this behind the, the back. And then he says on the phone, Baba's telling me to tell you that he's not here. <laughs> you are a superhero to your kids. Why do I tell you that? It goes full, full circle after a while. When the kid gets older, he goes back to his father and his mother for inspiration. There comes a time where we as kids, we ignore our parents. We don't see them as worthy of being followed. Our friends will say the exact same thing that my dad has said for the past five years. But I'll say, yeah, man, that makes sense. You're right, you're right, you're right. That's good advice. But that's like I've been saying that to you for five years. 
But because you said it, it's not the case. You are a gardener inside your home. You are raising flowers inside your flower bed. With care, with love, with compassion. Raise your children. How many times have I heard, heard how much dhulm and oppression happens inside? You keep your children locked up. Yes, I said yesterday that the child's role is to respect their parents even if unjust, unjust behavior is happening inside the house. Musa is being told by Allah to go to Fir'aun with a naram najah. No doubt, that's their duty. That's their wajibat. The wajibat of the parents is to show love and mercy and compassion for them. To forgive their mistakes. To not forget that you were 16 at one time. To not forget that you were a kid at one time. To not forget that you would run around the streets of India and Pakistan at one time. How quickly do we forget? So being the leaders inside the house, being parents inside the house is a test, a test of your patience sometimes. You've told your kid time and time again, don't do this, don't do this, he keeps doing it. That's a patience virtue inside of you that Allah inshallah will increase if you show him enough reason to increase that virtue. Sallu ala Muhammad wa so I ask you, please understand that you are the gardener inside your house. If every kid is a rose, a tulip, a carnation, there are separate flowers that require separate medicine and water and sunlight to grow. Point number one. Point number two is this very famous hadith by Imam Jafar al-Sadiq alayhi salatu Where he talks about the, the, the seven year stage that all of you have heard a thousand times, mashallah. The first seven years, the kid is the, the, the master, you are the slave. The second seven, he is a slave and you're the master. Then when he turns 15, you, you two are associates. I'll skip the first two stages. The last stage is very, very important. Especially those of you inside the audience who have teenage children. May God bless you, inshallah. It's not easy. What does Imam Sadiq mean by this? You see, in this society, one thing that they constantly harp on when it comes to parents is affection and respect. To show your son and your daughter love, compassion. We have a hadith where our Holy Prophet says that kiss your children. For every kiss that you give your child, you increase one level in Jannah. For every kiss that you give your child, one level in Jannah. My, our parents are not used to being kissed by their fathers. They're used to being smacked by their fathers. They're used to being yelled at by their father. Right? How many times, my respected friend, how many times did your father, Marhum, used to hug you or kiss you and say, I love you, Beta? Maybe on one hand you can count that in, in, inside your whole life. This society requires that. These children require that. They won't admit it. They'll be all uncomfortable when you come and hug them, but they'll love it. Show affection towards your children. Show love towards your children. Let them know once in a while that, you know what, I'm happy in the path that you are treading. It's not always this idea of being on their case, being on their case. Once in a while, tell them, you know what, you are 17 year old, you are 18 year old, you are an educated individual. Mashallah, you are not a drug addict, you have not gone to prison, you are not a father of a child. All these things in this society are not uncommon. You should be inside school nowadays. How difficult of a society your child is in, trying to safeguard his Iman. And the fact that he is here, let's say on Friday nights, or the fact that he is constantly trying to become a better person, is worthy of your praise as a parent. And he wants nothing but a pat on the back from you as the father and the mother. That would make his day. So when we talk about associates, we talk about this. After a while, understand that your child, your teenage child, is an associate inside of your house. The example I'll give you is this. Let's say you are planning a big trip as a family. Summertime rolls around or Christmas time rolls around, you have a few weeks off. You decide, let's say, to go to Karbala, for example, inshallah, as a family. You have three kids inside your house. The eldest son is 16 years old. The other ones are younger, eight years old, nine years old, 10 years old. You and your wife, or your wife, and you sit down, let's say, and plan out this trip. What this means about associate is this, is you bring your 15 year old inside that meeting with you. And tell him, say, look, you are, you are sitting in this meeting with me and mama, the other two, your two siblings are too young for this. 
I want you to sit there with me and help us plan this family plan, th th this family trip out. I want you to research flights for me online. I want you to research hotels for me online. I want you to tell me which dates are best to go. I want you to find a good afala for me. Assign responsibility for these children. Empower them inside their homes. By the time you turn on the computer, these kids already have information for you on their fingertips. So use that. In the process, what will happen is that your, your son or your daughter will feel like Baba and Mama respect me inside the house. I'm not like an eight-year-old child. If you group all your kids who are 16 and 7 into one group saying, well, but they don't know anything. Then what you've done is you've disrespected your child. And a, and a kid who does not feel respect inside of his house will not want to be inside the house. And that's where we lose our kids. The more time they spend outside the home, the more they are out of your control. The more they're inside the house, the more they are a product of the, uh, uh, of, in the, uh, of the environment that you are creating inside of your house. So point number three very quickly is what? Empower your children at home. When they reach a certain age, and Imam Sarah says after 14 years old, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes him balig at 15, makes her balig at 9. Meaning what? That they are now responsible for every decision that they make at 15 years old. The same 15 year old that you think is a bacha chalo, yeah, I forget it. It's the same 15 year old that God says, you are now responsible for everything that you do. I know, I credit you, you have potential to make good decisions. You have potential to make rash decisions. Even though your, your, your parents might think that you are a useless child, you are responsible in my eyes. Use that as your moan of tarbiyah inside your home. If you, are, if you are planning to move, let's say, buy a house, include your kid in that process. Say, go online and search for homes for us. Help us. What do you think? Should we move? Should we not move? And they'll give you advice and listen to it and follow it. You're not crossing any lines. You're not breaking any barriers. What you are doing is you are empowering your child that now he is on the inside, not on the outside looking in. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. So quickly recapping, it's already time. Quickly recapping, we have to be able to understand that if you are a parent with multiple children inside your house, please, I ask you time and time again, recognize how each child needs to be raised. And give them that. The last thing that we want to do, and I have two daughters at home, the last thing we want to do is compare the kids. And sometimes our parents are masters at comparison. I tell Ali, and in a second he's done. I tell you and you like a turtle, you go slow and slow and slow and, Baba, I can't find it, Baba, where is it? Forget it, Hassan, go, 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 go get it. Right away what you've done, if you squash the, the, that kid's confidence. Right away what you've done is you've told them, you know what, Hassan is better than you, Ali is better than you. You are useless in my eyes, you get nothing done, ask Ali, he'll do it. That's the worst style of parenting. You can't do that. That's oppression inside the house. You favor one child over the other. Be careful of that. Every child has the right to be loved. Every child has the right for nurture. Every child has the right to be respected by their parents. The Holy Prophet would say salam first to every single child before they would say salam to him. Out of respect for that child. And point number two, and more importantly, empower your children at home. Include them in major decisions. Once your child reaches that 15, 16 years old, include them if you're moving, if there's a trip, let's say, for example. If you're having a problem with another child, ask him, Hassan, what do I do with your eight-year-old sister? What do you think I should do? Say, Mama, Baba, try this. Baba, try this. This might work, that might work. Make them your liaison with the other kids. Watch how you flourish as, as kids and as a family. That's what we need to do. You can't bunch your kids into one group and feed them the exact same thing you've been doing for years and years. It's not going to work. We need to adopt the Islamic and the Western balanced approach when it comes to raising our children. That includes love, it includes compassion, it includes mercy as well. We ask you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept this qadeel al-ibad insha'Allah. We ask you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
that there's so much injustice right now, of course, in the Gaza Strip, in Syria, in Iraq, in Pakistan. We ask you, Allah, to weaken the hands of the enemies of Islam and strengthen the Mustaz Arfin, inshallah. And I ask you to recite Surah Fatir for those uh, souls right now who have given their life for Islam, for the Shohada, and specifically for the Hassan Ibrahim family, for the Lada Haji family, for the Ali, Ali Dina family, the Muki family, the Kaku family, the Ahmad family, and Marhum Shamshul Islam, inshallah, Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.